So I was around four or five years old. My cousin was a swimming coach and he talked to my, to my dad and told him that um, put, to put me and my brother in, the, in a swim, summer camp. Y el entrenador eh, quien estaba enseñándole le, le dijo a mi esposo que ellos, los dos, los dos hermanos, tenían actitudes para ser nadadores. We just start our swimming career right there. Veíamos su empeño, su dedicación y el esfuerzo que él estaba haciendo para lograr sus metas. When I was about like 15, 16, um, I was kind of disappointed with swimming. It, it got really hard to like drop time, so I was like, man, am I going to really be able to get faster? Era bien estresante para ambos. Algunas veces hasta teníamos nuestras diferencias en el camino. Josué no quería ir y yo, de todo el sacrificio que había hecho, decía, bueno, tú vas a natación. After I graduated high school, I went to the Youth Olympic Games and one of my friends from childhood, he told me that he was going to Missouri to, to swim for, the, for them with a really good scholarship. He asked me like, hey, uh, what college are you going to? And I was like, um, any? <laughs> Cuando era adolescente, él tenía el deseo de nadar para BYU. Él tenía esa meta. Y el Señor le fue abriendo los caminos. In my second last competition in 2014, I met a, a BYU swimmer and I saw him wearing some BYU uh, pants. I saw the one, I was like, that's BYU. And so I went to talk to him and he took my time, sent my email. BYU contacted me, he was like, we want you to come here. I was like, no way. Like I, I talked to my family like right away. And like, it was, it was kind of like, it, it meant my, the whole year basically. <laughs> Pero él se iba para la misión y ellos dijeron que, que iban a seguir esperándolo. I made a, a decision that I was going to serve a mission no matter what. But when the time came, the question was when? What well, my nutritionist at the time, I was talking to him about it and he told me, um, for your swimming career, the, uh, the sooner you go, the better. So you can have more time when you come back to like get back in shape, get faster and have a longer career after you come back. So that just feels right. I was like, OK, I'm just going to do that. <laughs> At the end of 2014, I make the big qualifying time for the Olympics. I was like, oh, man, I, I qualified. But I had made my decision and I just had to stick with it. We were playing basketball. I could jump kind of high at the time, so I was just like, went for, for a little dunk in, in the rim. And when I was in the air, I lose balance. So all the, all the pressure, all the force coming down just went through my right knee, my left knee, and it just tore my ACL completely. After a little bit, I talked to my mission president. We went to, we, I went to see a doctor. He told me, um, that I had to go home to get a surgery if I wanted to like come back and be a and be a good swimmer. When I was about seven months in the mission, I took the decision to come back to my house, have surgery, and it took me about four months to be able to like have surgery and recover from that and be able to do basically everything again. I could stay at home and just like start working for working out for swimming, but I decided that it was better for me to like go back and finish my mission and do what was right. Got back home at the end of September 2017, and I had a couple of competitions in, in that year. I wasn't fast enough, nowhere near what I was before. It took me about six, seven months to be able to swim fast enough that I could say, okay, I, 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 can, I can keep going. Los papás siempre vemos la parte económica hasta que al final 
que nos dimos cuenta que solo teníamos que costear el, el boleto aéreo. Uno de mis mejores amigos, pues él me llamó y me dijo, tengo el regalo para Josué, ¿qué necesita? Dijo, entonces yo dije, el ticket aéreo. <risa> entonces mi amigo, pa, digo, bueno, está bien, yo lo, lo voy a poner. The second he stepped foot on the campus, uh, I feel like him and I, like, we, we had a really close bond. Josué is the, the definition of a, a firm foundation. He's, he's a solid presence on the team and no matter what time of the year it is, how tired everyone is, like whatever, whatever the circumstances are, he's always swimming really fast and he's always able to kind of, to pick everyone up. He came here and we're like, oh my goodness, this guy is fast. We didn't know what we were supposed to do. Everything was shut down. He actually was in a Vasa gym that was closed down, did some training at Provo Rec. He did some training in Spanish Fork at the outdoor pool. We just kept hoping. It's super difficult when you're kind of training at the highest level, wanting to compete in a meet that's only every four years. And it's, it's what we always dream of um, as swimmers. And I feel like it was more of a mental game. I feel like, especially Josue is, is, is such a, a physical beast, it's such a such a specimen that it was keeping mentally sharp that okay, eventually this is gonna is gonna clear up. When everything got shut down, we were still wondering like, are they gonna have the Olympics this year or not? And either way, I was just like, I'm just gonna keep training. Like, it doesn't matter if the Olympics are gonna be next year, this year, or they're gonna be like canceled, and I have to wait until like 2024 to be to to go to my first Olympics. It doesn't matter. I'm just gonna keep practicing, and I think. That was the mentality that helped me go through this COVID season. The fact that he's able to represent his country and be the fastest man ever from his country is, is something that we're all extremely proud of. And, and we love being able to kind of poke at that at, at practice or whenever we're together that he's an Olympian. For me, it's always been a pleasure to be able to like uh, represent my country and just every time I go to a competition representing my country, I'm, I'm just there like, man, I, I can swim slow here. I, I'm representing my country. I, I have to do my best right here. Yo soy el principal este, seguidor de Josué. Este, no puedo hablar mucho porque creo que se me va. I'm sorry. <laughs> Es un tema que para mí es muy difícil, este, porque he visto a mi hijo romper tantas barreras, alcanzar tantas cosas, que para mí es un ejemplo. O sea, para mí personal, como persona, yo creo que yo no podría lograr en mi vida todo lo que él ha, ha logrado. Por eso yo digo, yo solamente soy el papá de Josué y soy el principal fanático.